it's really interesting to see this uh, unusual livery and certainly a perfect addition for anybody who's wanting to model the wartime or immediately post-wartime London and North Eastern Railway. Hi there everyone, welcome back to another video here with me Jenny Kirk here on my channel. It's really great to see you, I hope you are keeping well in this enforced period of lockdown. So to keep you entertained, we've got another box opening and review, and this is a Hornby product that I've had a little while. And I just want to show you this. It's one of my favourite models in the Hornby range. And uh, with this particular livery, it brings up to date all of the different livery options that the prototype locomotives carried in real life. And also don't forget to check out our sponsor, train o -Matic, makers and designers of DCC decoders and other related products. Designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts and designed specifically to be as easy to use as possible. Visit them at trainomatic.com and also at tramfabrique.nl. But without further ado, come with me. I'll enjoy your company as I show you this new model. <laughs> So this is the model. It's one of the really excellent Hornby Super Detail A4 Pacifics. But this is a bit of an unusual livery, not one that I've seen often in model form. And it's the wartime austerity black. But with the full LNER on the tender, I have also seen these with just NE as well. But it's really interesting to see this uh, unusual livery and certainly a perfect addition for anybody who's wanting to model the wartime or immediate immediately post-war time London and North Eastern Railway. We've got a catalogue number on the uh, the box. This was bought second hand. So we've got R3441 North Eastern 462 Class A4 Locomotive. And I'm going to have to take a run up on this name. Samuro Wilson, I think that's pronounced. But uh, why do the, gosh, why do these people have such difficult to pronounce names? Really unusual names, it has to be said. And they would have been um, something like a director of the London and North Eastern Railway Company. Now, I don't believe that this locomotive was originally named that. Uh, it would have been renamed probably from a bird's name. But um, uh, it's certainly one which I've not seen this particular member of the class in model form before. So, pretty standard Hornby box. And this is the much more up-to-date uh, Super Detail A4 with the slightly more permanent connection between locomotive and tender. The previous version looks pretty much the same uh, but it doesn't have the decoder socket in the tender and that's what we really want. It means that this is really easy to fit with TTS sound. Hornby do do a TTS A4 sound chip and fitting this is just so amazingly easy. I'm going to show you that towards the end of the video. And also, I um, might add, whilst this particular livery option isn't currently available that I can find, uh, we do have some affiliate links to a number of other A4 Pacifics to an equally high standard in other liveries which are available. Now, if you buy through the affiliate links, it doesn't cost you a penny extra. And indeed, I have checked out the um, companies that we're linking to do, at the time of recording, still do mail order, even though the physical shops have been shut by the coronavirus outbreak. So um, it's still something that even if you're on lockdown at the moment, you're still able to get yourself a really nice A4 Pacific. And it does help the channel out if you uh, buy through those affiliate links. And the model does come with an extra detail pack. Uh, again, this was bought second hand, so this has been resealed. But what we see in there, um, we touched on this in the with the Samiles Beaver 
review that we did comparatively recently and this is a flanged set of trailing bogey wheels for if you want to either put this on display in a cabinet or you have a layout that has very very gentle curves um, because the, the rear bogey on this is fixed to eliminate any kind of air gaps and has flangeless wheels so it will run on train set curves quite readily and these flangeless wheels stop it from derailing but if you want the more authentic look and you can accommodate that they do give you a set of wheels plus we've got the uh, drain cock pipes as well for underneath the front cylinders these again only fit these if you have very gentle uh, curves on your layout or it's going in a display cabinet because otherwise it's not going to get round corners uh, but as to the rest of the model there's not really a lot difference from when the, we did the Sir Miles Beaver review. So I'm not going to dwell too much on the construction of this model, just that this is a really exquisite rendition of the A4. Now, I do know that there is a, a um, very, very upmarket one available from another manufacturer, but it's a bit like those Class 66s that are out there. They come in at different price points, catering for different aspects of the market. So I don't believe that this competes directly with the exquisite, uh, really super duper upmarket models. And certainly for the money that you pay, you do get an exquisite model in this price bracket uh, from Hornby. This model has all of the accoutrements that uh, you've come to expect from the Super Detail A4, including that exquisite back head detail in there, in the cab, all picked out, tempo printed. Even the gauges as well are tampo printed with the needles and the uh, the uh, numbering as well on them. I don't think it's actual legible numbering, but certainly at all viewing distances and even under magnification, it really does look the part. The back of the tender as well, we've got a lot of the detail picked out. And certainly in this austerity black livery, it would be easy for some of this detail to go unnoticed. But the... Uh, the brass and the uh, the white as well really do serve to make a lot of interest on this model. The tender drawbar is a semi-permanently fixed affair where it's screwed at both ends. So you can park these two's company uh, quite easily, but it protects this plug in the tender from being unduly strained. And it's something that I really like about the Hornby way of doing things. Other manufacturers have ones which can come undone, not be noticed and put a lot of strain on these cables. And if they pull out from the plug, then you're going to have a lot of issues issues trying to get that repaired so the fact that this uh, protects matters is really really good you can also see the keeper plate there on that flangeless set of trailing wheels and there's just a single screw if you unscrew that that comes out this wheel set drops out and the spare set that they supply with you with the flanges on drops back in keeper plate back in and a single screw holds that in which is really simple to do this example has come factory fitted with all of the brake gear on the underside in place and uh, it does save a lot of aggro. It has pickups on all six driving wheels plus all eight tender wheels and that means that this is a super smooth runner even at low speeds and uh, gets through even insole frog points with the greatest of ease. Running on DC, super reliable, but also running on DCC, there's none of the stuttering that you sometimes get with shorter wheelbase locomotives. The front bogey is that characteristic, prototypically correct, centre sprung affair, just like the prototype. And I really do like these coming through from the manufacturers because it does make a big difference. And if you um, watch my video of the old versus new, what's the difference with the, uh, uh, the Princess Coronation class, you'll see that the older versions had this um, historically, uh, what we were dealing with, with these uh, rear pivoted bogies. It, it you can see that difference when it runs and uh, certainly with these it does make a lot of difference i love the attention to detail in making that work and be prototypically correct it means when this locomotive swings through curves on the track it looks graceful it looks like a proper rendition of the prototype and it doesn't doesn't give itself so much away as a model 
The front frames as well, nicely done. They're a little bit more basic than we saw on the Princess Coronation class, but certainly they do look the part. We've got the valances cut away as what happened with these locomotives during wartime as an economy measure to make it much easier to uh, actually maintain the, the valve gear. And actually, I quite like them in this form. When I grew up, uh, my first A4 ever was the Hornby 00 Silver King, which I've actually showed you in an extreme old versus new comparison video. And I still have a soft spot for that locomotive, but it's, it's something that these cutouts really did suit the locomotive to the point that when I see a fully streamlined one, it doesn't quite look right to my eyes. The rest of the detail on this model is exquisitely done. The black is a kind of a satin finish black and it works really, really well, it has to be said. We've also got the flush glazing on the cab and that is nicely done with the gunmetal surrounds on there, very neatly finished and also what appears to be a wooden surround on the side windows too. It's little details like this that really bring out a livery of this type. The tampo printing is really sharp, so we haven't got a lot to see on the side. The LNER is pretty basic with no uh, shading on there, and same for the 4499, but it is sharp and it is clear, and actually the black shows up this lemon yellow so, so well. Looking to the front of the locomotive, the nameplates are separately applied, brass etch parts, and the the brass with the red does show up so, so nicely against this black and it is, is sharp. There's no need to actually feel to replace these in my opinion. Looking to the front of the locomotive, it is correctly modelled without the uh, a smoke box number that came along in BR days. So its front form is true to LNER prototypical practice, and we've got the running number tan and we've got the running number tampo printed on the front buffer beam. And we actually get the shading highlights and lowlights and the serif effect as well on this, unlike the uh, cab side numbers. And it's really nice to see, and it's been super superbly realised by Hornby. There is no front coupling on this model. Looking to the bogey, it's hard to tell actually whether there is provision to apply a coupling of any sort. I don't think that there is, um, but actually these locomotives pretty much never pulled anything in reverse. The front buffers are fully sprung and they're turned metal, really quite slender, and they're quite robust as well. They're not in danger of falling apart, so it is nicely done. We've got the instanter type coupling on there, really nicely done again, and actually because there is no front coupling, it's nice to see that factory applied. It does look the part, along with the vacuum hose. Again, I've never seen any real evidence of these working substantially in reverse pulling a train, so these are really just purely for show. Looking down the funnel, it's uh, a good air gap all the way down there, so it doesn't look like some of the earlier models from various manufacturers you kind of just saw blank. With this you see space, just like in the real smoke box. Looking to the top of the model, another really nice feature that I like, apart from the turned metal safety valves and whistle at the front, are these sliding roof vents, and they really do slide open and shut. And they're reasonably robust too, so they do stand a little bit of uh, uh, moving around. Uh, some of them are a little bit stiff, but even so, you can prise that open carefully with a jeweler's screwdriver. And it's nice to see this attention to detail being put on models that are coming from manufacturers. Looking back to the tender, we have this removable plastic load. It does come out. I'm not going to try and um, lever this out because this is a loaner from, uh, it's actually Les's model. So Les, if you're watching, your model really is impressing me, but I didn't want to lever this out because I didn't want to risk damaging somebody else's model. But the coal insert is really nicely realised. Hornby and some of the other manufacturers, it has to be fair, are really getting this look of coal perfectly in plastic form and it does look the part. To me, I see no need to add a smattering of real coal over the top. It just doesn't need it. 
but this does lever out and you get a fully modelled rendition of the inside of the coal hopper so you can model this as a locomotive that's low on coal and certainly with the Sir Miles Beaver model we showed you the inside of that so if you want to see what it looks like refer back to that video. The rest of the tender top detail is nicely done it comes with a non-corridor tender these locomotives were uh, produced with some with tender corridor collect connections and some without uh, and Hornby has tooled up accurately for both. The wheels on the tender nicely done they're a very heavy set wheel and the front face is this kind of dished effect is nicely realized too so all in all we have got an amazing package here one final thing of note the valve gear the Walshots valve gear and the uh uh, connecting rods are nicely fluted they're all metal parts including the cross slide so they are pretty robust so this locomotive will take to a lawful lot of running and will take it well so turning now to the DCC fitting guide and I always do like to do this so I'm going to get some uh, uh, jewelers uh, screwdrivers and I'm going to show you in association with our sponsor train o -Matic, how easy it is to DCC fit this model. This is the decoder I've chosen, the Trainomatic wired 8-pin decoder, but I also absolutely recommend if you want to go down the sound route, the Hornby TTS sound decoder is a drop-in fit and is designed to fit so easily into this space. I can well recommend that too. We start off with a flathead jeweler screwdriver and to get into this tender, which is where the socket is, gently lever out the NEM pocket slimline tension lock coupling. That will reveal down this hole here a screw and with a small jeweler's uh, Philip style head you need to just undo that screw. When that's loose we can turn it over and the whole tender top lifts up at the back, unclips at the front and then we just lift this out of the way. So just lever out the blanking plate, put that to one side and what you see in here is the 8 pin decoder socket and then the metal tender weight. If you're fitting the TTS sound chip you're going to need to undo that screw there and what you will find is that the speaker that is supplied in its surround fits perfectly into the recess underneath and then allows you to screw this weight back on. As we're just going to fit a plain decoder on this model we're going to get the Trainomatic 8 pin out and orange is pin 1 and you see there pin 1 is marked on the uh, decoder slot. Line up the pins very carefully, push it home, make sure it's in, in all the way. Now the decoder is already heat shield wrapped so you don't have to worry about this shorting out on anything and what I tend to do is just to keep it in place because there's no sound decoder in there I just tend to tuck it in to uh, the slot underneath here where the speaker would go just to keep it in place as we come to put the tender lid back on. There's a clip at the front we need to make sure that that is lined up at the front and clicked in home. Once that's clipped in push the back of the tender down make sure you don't have any wires trapped around the edges. We get our screw drop it straight back down the whole Phillips screwdriver down in don't over tighten it you don't want to strip the thread and that's it all that's left now is to fit the tender coupling back in and we are good to go now we come to the scores. So first up is finish. And actually, whilst it's a very uh, austere, utilitarian uh, paint job on this, through wartime uh, uh, restrictions, what is here is really nicely realized. The tampo printing, what little there is, is really sharply done. An austere black wartime livery is not my cup of tea, but I know a lot of other people really do like modelling that period. And I think that it is pretty well realised what we see here. And I can't really find an awful lot wrong with uh, what we have on this model. The only thing that I can find to um, pull the score back a bit, I guess, is that the brown surrounds on the cab windows don't look quite right to me. But 
it's not really a major detraction. So I'm going to give this for finish a 9.0 out of 10. Functionality. The locomotive runs really, really well. And I do particularly like that tender drawbar arrangement that Hornby have come up with to protect the wires that go across from locomotive to tender. In terms of other bits and pieces, well, they've got you covered with uh, extra flanged wheels if you want this to go into a display cabinet or you've got very easy curves on your layout. So it's nice to see that, you know, they cater for that whilst not compromising its ability to get round most people's layouts. Everything else, the uh, full valve gear works really really well and the springing for the front bogey is prototypically correct and works really well going so much towards making this locomotive run very statesmanlike on the track. So for functionality I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. Ease of use well, for me, a lot of this comes down to how easy it is to DCC fit this. And this is one of the easiest models that there is on the market. A single screw, unclip the tender top, and in you are. It's all set up even for taking a sound decoder, and that really is a nice touch in this day and age. All too often we see locomotives where there hasn't been a lot of thought into actually how the DCC chipping will take place, but Hornby have designed this to be as easy as possible. So I'm going to give this a 9.9 .9 out of 10. For aesthetics, well, to me, they really have captured every aspect of the A4 Pacific really well. I can't really find anything wrong with this. Everything from front to back, sprung buffers, correct pattern wheels, the Walshutz valve gear, the fluted coupling rods, and that centre sprung front bogey. Everything is there as it should be. So for aesthetics, it gets a 10 out of 10. Value for money. Well, these are quite expensive, but we live in expensive times and you do get a lot of model for your money. I've seen these around brand new for around the 130 to 140 pounds per model, which when you compare to some of the other models on the market is actually at the lower end of the scale. So for value for money, I think that this model gets a good solid 8.9 out of 10. That brings us to the total score, and it's another really healthy score from a really good Hornby model. 47.3 out of 50. Is this a model I can recommend? Very much so. I already have six A4 Pacifics in my fleet. Would I add another one? very much. And there's some on the market at the moment which are very, very eye-catching, including one in experimental purple that we've got an affiliate link down below to. And it's certainly an eye-catching model. It doesn't matter what livery you put on these A4 Pacifics, from silver to garter blue to uh, Doncaster green, LNER wartime black, BR experimental blue, BR experimental purple, BR green. Any livery, this model certainly suits it. Can I recommend this? Yes, I certainly can. Well, I hope that video has been really informative to you. It's been great having your company and I hope you are keeping well. And uh, I do hope as well that these videos are helping get you through some really quite uh, difficult times. Also, don't forget to like this video and share it too. It's really important that other people know about this video who might also be in lockdown and looking for things to do, things to watch. And also, if you haven't already done so, do subscribe to the channel. You'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, and Peter Bolton. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.